And that was Jingteng Mountain, still continuing on for the next couple of weeks, as well as this weekend. There is a special extravaganza of Jingteng Mountain going on right now. You guys at home can actually get involved yourselves with your teams and put a team together for this special one this weekend. If you actually do come top, and it's on PC, Xbox, and PS4, just so you know, you will receive 8,000 gems per player in your team if you come first. The top team, obviously, is the one that receives that prize, but there's also gem prizes scaling down. You can find out all the information there as well over at smitegame.com if you want to find out more information about that. Unfortunately, me and Tolly won't be allowed to do that because we're hired as employees. You say that. You're going to try and sneak in? I'm just going to make an alt. You're going to fire yourself? You're going to quit? I'm going to quit for a week. Come back. I'm going to be reborn. The reborn Tolly. Well, talking about being reborn right now, Rival with a little bit of a change up in their roster here. Obviously, with the adjoinment of Watson this time after being on the side of Retribution earlier on, up against Cyclone, who are a team that have kind of come out of nowhere. Well, technically the Challenger Cup, but it still feels like nowhere. Very impressive play from them, being able to be tied right now mm -hmm. at seven points with Rival, both sitting at seven points. Two wins, one split right now. And this is, we saw them split earlier on. In week number two, we I did. think it was. And now this time they're going to face each other again. So we could see another interesting set between these two. I think it's going to be the closest one we're going to see in Europe for a little while here. Obviously, Retribution not on the same mark as we saw previously. And XL still below the top teams here. So Rival versus Cyclone is the premier matchup in Europe right now. It should be with Rival first pick option, Cyclone GG second. We'll see how the picks and bans are about to start out. Normally, what you really want to try to do for first pick is get that really good setup god, whether it's mm. Susano for jungle or Terra for the support. I agree with that. We'll see where Rivals start things off then with their first pick, sorry, first ban option here available to them. And generally it's first pick, you want to leave a lot of things up totally, you know, just so you can make sure you get that priority pick. Normally if you're second pick, you want to leave a lot of oh, options available. Okay. You want to allow the first pick to get whatever they want, and then you dictate the counter pick strategy for yourself. So X Cyclone should be able to look for it, but instead they're going to ban away the Terra. They really don't want to deal with that support initiation. And Rattatops are taken out as well. So the last ban over to Cyclone, we see the bit of Guan Yu banned. Obviously, there's now Quan could be banned as well. And last but not least, the Fafnir, but it will be the Guan Yu, which means Rival have the opportunity for Fafnir here. We don't see Guan Yu being banned very often, so that means Cyclone is really scared of the sustain. They banned away the Terra and the Guan Yu. They don't want to deal with that healing option. Forcing Rival into the Fafnir for the great team fight option. Seems that Cyclone GG, maybe they have an anti attack speed strategy to deal with it. Well, with the Fafnir lock in, I love the idea from Cyclone GG that to take away Freya, just that lane overall empowers with the coerce for Freya to do even more damage. You really don't want to have Fafnir and Freya together, especially when you cannot pick a Terra to really yeah, shut it down. We've seen Freya's in the dual lane that got completely decimated by the the Terra. So now Cyclone GG, they're picking some really good options, taking the Neath, which is also not allowing Rival to have that global pressure to deal with the Freya themselves. Well, there's a Jingwei lock, and I'm surprised we didn't see a Sol or a Kronos picked up there, just to combine nicely with the Fafnir once more but instead they're going to go for the Jingwei and the Raijin pick up here. And it seems that like that could be one option where you go for the Solo or the Kronos and you have a Jingwei in middle or vice versa, have the Kronos middle. But going for a Raijin, you're trying to get some really good early pressure between your jungle and middle. We've seen it before the last set, Fenrir Raijin was able to really dictate the early pacing of the game. Well, with Terra taken and Fafnir taken as well, the last one really left in the supports that you see very often is the Bacchus. And it will be picked up before the Caliban phase and immediately Cyclone got to ban a Wheelix themselves. Very surprised. It makes sense. Honestly, you have the Neath backflip, you have the Bacchus initiation, and also you have the knockup from Xingwei that you have to worry about. On the side of Rival, their jungler right now, it's going to be Rapio. He's, I don't think he's played a Willish too often. Uh, Rapio has played it before in the past, but at the same time, I mean, when you're Cyclone GG, you get the next pick. You could have looked for it with the back setup being available to you. It seems that they're going to go for more of an aggressive style. They could have the Susano available. That would be a good burst combination, as well as maybe the Thor trying to get that lockdown potential. That's true. I mean, we did see a little bit of Erlang Shank coming out from Cyclone GG earlier on in the support role of all things, but this time with the Bacchus, it's more than likely going to be him. Susano and Hombats have been banned out, and it's over to Cyclone GG for what they're going to pick next. And this is why the Wish was banned, with Susano being banned. They're trying to get their jungler right off the bat, and it's going to be a very 
non-conventional jungle pick of the Arachne. So it seems to me that Cyclone GG, they have more of a very comfort pick for this Arachne. Yeah, and that Arachne, I mean, when you say it's not, not conventional, why is it not conventional, Tolly? It doesn't have the greatest setup in the world. You have a slow from a distance, but it doesn't have the stun, the safety stun. If you're looking for poke wars in the mid lane, Arachne's not that kind of guy that you really want to have, especially against a Ryzen. But he's pretty good against an Al Kwong, the team rival just locked in for themselves as well. So actually going to be a bit of a counter matchup there. Cyclone GG do lock in your mid which to me spells it's going to be solo lane. Although we could see Arachne solo here. I'm pushing the boat out a little bit. But it's it very be. possible. We've seen both options explored. Ymir solo, Ymir jungle, Arachne solo, Arachne jungle. But either way, with Alquang picked from rival, they kind of counterpicked themselves, yeah. I would say, because you get chased down by the web, unfortunately. I would have loved to see a Thor here because you can utilize that long distance poke between the tectonic rift, the hammer, as well as the Ryzen throwing out the drums just to be able to poke out Izuna here. Yeah, and not only that as well, I mean, even Azuna in the jungle position here, he's going to be a jungle Azuna here. So there is a bit of a change up in the roster here. No styly on the side of Cyclone played earlier on today. Blokely, Azuna is going to be in the jungle and, and it's going to be Salugi in the solo lane here. Or yeah, Salugi sounds right to me. We could just call him Lugi if we want. You want to call him Lugi? I'm, I'm nah. almost down. Nah. He's European to me. You never know what Lugi means. It's an American term now. We can call him Sal. We call him Snot. That's what you EU people do. At least in the UK. However, look at this. The invade coming out early on from the Rafa Rackney with a Ymir solo lane. Early bullying a Raven and an Al Kwong. That's what you have to do against the Al Kwong. Don't let him get any sort of lead early on. Izuna recognizing this, picks the Arachne, and just taking advantage of the fact that it is an Al Kwong to pick up the Wrath. Now, Ymir level 1 is still a lot of damage. Oh, Eight yeah. second cooldown on his carpet. 100% enhance increased off of the passive. And not only that, Rapio they're forced to actually use his abilities to clear away the spiders. Means they've got less wave clear here from Team Rival. So early rotation from Cyclone GG. Get the speed buff. Now looking for the fire elementals. Although Watson's trying to deny at least one of them. But now he's aggressed on. I don't think he has his thunder crash oh. and he's going to get caught out of the position. Made. Forced to use the purification. The root off the mark. But he's still getting chased. He's still going to get chased down. They missed all their abilities on him though. Some way Watson, he to the divine gods and the gods were good right then. Watson has to be so careful coming back into the lane because the need finding one spirit arrow will confirm the kill. Conceding those fire giant elementals now giving the right side mid harpies over the way of Cyclone. I don't even know how we got out there. I'm so confused. I mean, they missed the Spirit Arrow. They also missed the Glacial Strike. And one of those two things would have combined. It definitely would have been death. I mean, the Freeze was purified away early on, though, which really helped them out. Up to the left-hand side, though. More aggression coming out. Atoman trying to find the hits onto the Freya early on. Still going to find some of them. And the Sustain definitely favoring Rival here with Zenborn on the Fafnir. Love that Gust that just came out there. You saw No Stally pop the Pulse, but by using that Gust, knocked him back, unable to clear the wave out. So more pressure for the way of Rival now to answer back the early aggression from Cyclone. Now, no. though, no, Look looking this. to try to poke his head around the corner, but he's going to walk into Izuna, securing his own blue buff, now transitioning over to the speed side. And now Rival, they can look for their own side left mid Harpies. They've lost the rights earlier. But this still works out okay. I mean, the, overall, they lose the right and Harpies, but they get the lefts as well as, you know, whether the storm in the jungle, so to speak. They only lost the speed buff there. But Cyclone GG definitely coming out on top of that as the aggression continues from Atone. The gold is still relatively even for both sides. So Cyclone GG, despite finding the invade on on the speed buff, they're able to get their own. Now, the difference is the timer between these two speed buffs. This should allow Izuna the the space she really needs to find that another secondary invade. Yeah, we'll see if they can go for that one again, especially knowing where the speed buff is on. There's a thunder crashing mid lane and the drum sounded from Watson, and he will get first blood off this one. He should have been a casualty himself to Azuna. Instead, it's the other way around. The problem was the fact that Watson got so much solo farm and the blue buff sharing of the experience earlier on. That allowed him to hit level five once he cleared that last midway, finding the level four Arachne. No ultimate available to Azuna, so not able to escape those drums. We saw the aggression in the dual lane there but a bit of a mistimed ability. There's no real trust between this duo and Hunter just yet. You can see the hammer was thrown and the gust at the same time instead of waiting for one to connect before the other. And imagine that was a Terra in the Xingwei combination. So much easier oh, to yeah. land that combination. That's why the Terra was banned. Instead of the Fafnir, just expecting more easy time in the dual laning phase. It's a nice good start for Rival here. And they're really committing heavily here onto Dostali, who's still level four. There goes Zenborn in with the Dragon Form. He's going to trade out, though, overall here as the tower gets the kill. Dinosaur did a good job with that flop to answer 
it back. Great job securing the kill onto the Freya, shutting down these magical gods, whether it's going to be the Alquang on the side of Rapio or the Freya on the side of Styly. You really want to not allow them to get to that late game form. Now, we're not talking about relics just yet, but we do see two Rafts online here, one on the side of the Fafnir and one also on the side of Azuna on Arachne. So we will see some little bit of wars around these Gold Furies with those control abilities available. I wouldn't be surprised if Cyclone GG once they invade the speed buff yet again from Al Kuang, if it was Rival that forced the issue around the Gold Fury with that Wrath on the Fafnir, mm. you you have that dual lane pressure and the control, so you really want to utilize it, especially with Freya being around there. You'd, Freya's not going to really stop you unless she finds the perfect whoop. Well, Azuna into the jungle here and going to start the Gold Fury very early. Has his Wrath available here? And as we just mentioned as well, the Wrath is also up for Zenborn on the Fafnir, but his ultimate is on cooldown right now. Going to try and get in in time. Too little, too late. Free Gold Fury the way of Cyclone GG, and they are very good at these Gold Fury controls here. Totally. He could have tried to stun out the Arachne or use his underhanded tactics just to get in a little bit quicker, but not going to find the steal. It's going to be a free one for the side of Cyclone GG. They're going to reset here. They're not going to find the speed buff invade, allowing Rapio to still continue control his own pace. Funny how even this game is considering Rival the one invaded and Rival the one that lost the Gold Fury here as well. However, that first blood did kind of answer back some of that. And it's very important to find that first blood in mid lane because now Watson with a still level 8, but it's Rapio who has that one level lead onto Izuna. Arachne coming around the corner there, looking for a little bit of Pokemon Dinosaur. He's not really too worried against this composition just yet. You've got some Mage Boots online though, and they may go aggressive because he's not as tanky as he would like to be. That's what you really want to do, exploiting the Bacchus that's not that tanky, finding uh, the nice execute onto Salugi. You mentioned exploit, and that's what you want to do against the Ymir solo. So you've talked about this many times when we've seen this Ymir coming out. Exploit him and try and pick him off. He didn't have the mana to go into the ultimate form. We could have bought him a lot of time, finding the speed bump, but now Dinosaur has to be careful. Belly flopping onto himself, but not going to find Rapio. Surprisingly, aggression from both teams, but Rapio going back in again, going to get hit by the World Weaver that I don't think was really aimed for him there. Zamborn making that rotation will force them all back as Watson goes chasing in the jungle here, looking for a kill. Watson in the back with the drums is going to find it too. Dinosaur falls down, but now he's in a bit of an awkward spot. The good news is, though, he's got a rotation coming. And that's a nice, clean disengage from Rival. They found the kills onto the Ymir. They found another kill onto Dinosaur, and now they just casually walk back to mill and just to farm it up, the experience lead for them is going to start going through the roof. Already a two-level lead for Rapio. Yeah, very good situation for them to be in at the moment as well, especially for an Al Kuang to be up in the jungle. If you can take the pace out of the other jungle, which is an Arachne this game, well, it just means you're going to have good things as time goes on. And what's he doing? Babysitting solo lane. Old school smite right here. And that's why I was expecting the invade from Izuna at the second time on Rapio, just to keep shutting him down, mm. not allowing him to get that experience or the mobility he really needs to get any sort of lead. Instead, going for the team-wide gold still allowing Rapio to make the plays that he needs. It's funny how one little kill just changes the whole game overall, Tony. That first blood drop onto Watson at the start of the game, that could have completely took this game in a different angle for Cyclone, especially because they've got the Gold Fury later on. Still looking for another kill onto Salugi. The ultimate comes out from Ymir, but now he doesn't have the CC immunity. Arachne, doesn't seem though, Rapio. And a good wall will help him out too. Rapio forced away. Spider is still giving chase for a second, but he gets out nicely. Just going to walk away. The teleport is available for Salugi, whereas 20 seconds on the side of Robin, going to belly flop away, recognizing that Watson is here. You have to respect the damage for this level 10 Ryzen, even though he only has one completed item. Well, Gnome's very low. Will Weaver coming through as well. Overhead kick already down as well. But the shot was blocked with that Will Weaver in the jungle. So I think Zembon ended up eating it and it allowed to keep his solo lane and Gnome alive. And with the teleport from Salugi, forcing the purification from Watson, the ultimate coming out, trying to find two members. But they're going to pulled in, but not a lot of damage after that taunt. Now Watson's going to retreat, and now Zembon surrounded, and Intoxicate goes off there as well by Dinosaur, forcing Watson completely out, but now a rotation all the way over from both lanes. The execute was missed. It was trying to go onto the Ymir. A nice little juke from the Freeze, finding the kill onto Salugi. Yet again, Rival still on top with these little skirmishes. This is a very fast-paced game, totally. Meanwhile, the Hunter is now going at it too. A torment bit off more than he can chew. Now, now going to get chased down by the Freya. First shot missed, but the last three do. No styling picking up a torment. And now that's going to allow him to get the experienced lead that he really needs. So he's going to be able to grab away if he could invade the Boris as well. But Gnome's in trouble here. He really going to get zoned out by Zenbor, but he got body blocked by his own teammate. Did well, though, to body block because he actually ate those spiders. So he's going to be able to get away because of that. And so Gnome will live by Zenbor. I don't even think he meant to do that, but it worked out great. Not at all. And now Styly controlling the left side, pushing out the wave if he wants to. He could look for those Boar invades. Instead, trying to squeeze in one more wave. Jingwei going to utilize that passive to get back to the left hand side. 
side is both teams looking at each other menacingly in mid. Well, normally you're looking for like a kill per minute, sorry, not a kill per minute, a level per minute in terms of experience game, but because there's been so many kills, they're actually ahead of that because of all the rotations going on. Flopping mid from Dinosaur, not going to find its home right now. Zembo's still hanging around with no mana here and get focused out, and Azuna will get credit for the kill. Obviously, passive paying dividends. Sandborn not able to jump away from that one, so Cyclone getting credited with a free support kill, not really going to able to find anything off of it. Gofier responding in about 30 seconds or so. Zenborn's Wrath is not available though, so they force that one out. So once Rap once Izunas is available, they should get their second Goal Fury. As long as Cyclone GG recognize that, they can go for that Goal Fury again. I mean, last time they got it, the, it, you also saw that Fafnir still had it up, but he wasn't able to get in range in time. So Cyclone can continue marching forward with these Gold Furies. They may look to do that soon. Heading into the nine minute mark. No, I'm looking for maybe a proxy farm or he's just going to spot out the speed buff. You want to be able to poke your head around the corner when there's nothing to do. Go into the jungle. If you're not going to proxy, reset the timer so that when they do respawn, if you have any sort of advantage, you can at least contest it. Well, it's actually going to be rival stand on this Gold Fury this time. Rana Toman tanked it for a while. Now Zenbon's there to support and Watson on his way. However, Bacchus will be the next one here. And this should force them to fall back here. I don't think they really want to heavily commit just yet because the rotation from Cyclone GG is now on its way. Bacchus would have done so much damage with one belly flop intoxicate. It would have killed Zenborn before he even got the opportunity to wrath. Very true indeed. So, Gold Fury reset for now. War Control is still in rival's favor there. A Cyclone GG start looking around the jungle looking for a pick as Dinosaur comes mid. I'm just going to back away. Meanwhile, back to the right we go. And one more time, substitute Saluigi, or Saluji, I should say, gets picked off again by Rapio, who is just babysitting doing a good job of it. Didn't even need to commit to the execute from Al Kuan. Gonna casually kill the Ymir that's immobile, securing the tier one tower on the right hand side. Although they do concede positioning on the Gold Fury. It's gonna be very important for Zenboard to get here in time to We're steal this. a lot early on. Watson's gonna fire the drums off though to buy a second, but Gold Fury's already gone to Cyclone GG. They try to scatter away. Jingwei giving chase with Zenbone here. Looking at no style, he forced to purify away. Airstrike not gonna connect. The World Weaver though when he lands. And now it's a Terminator in trouble, trying to run for his life. One hit will do it, not needed, as the dot damage from Azuna on the Arachne comes off. Rapio, though, he's coming behind the Neath in the red buff. He's trying to find another kill, just going to scare her away, but the rest of the action is going to be on Zenborn with a nice freeze from Salugi. Zenborn going to get walled off as well, so forced to ultimate or buy him a second. Needs to leap immediately and try and get away, but the Banish will deny him again, and he does get out. I think that Banish helped him more. Rapio, though, on the left-hand side, now diving for Dinosaur, and he gets the kill just in time. And he's going to be able to walk away. Zenborn got chased by Izuno, teleporting between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2, so trading one for one, what but the Neath getting chased by Gnome. It is a bloodbath right now. Rapio's trying to stay alive and find kills at the same time. Jukes out the illusion, getting some more poke damage off. Still going in at the moment, looking for the kill. He's Gnome, trying to catch up to Bloke, and he's juking out nicely, but Watson denies that with a Thunder Crash and picks up the kill for himself. And it looks like Rapio was able to walk away. Watson still doing a lot of damage to Salugi. The damage is just not enough from this level 11. Ymir, who went for Breastplate of Valor after the Shoes of the Magi. 9 to 5, 14 kills, and the gold lead is less than a 1,000, or just over a 1,000, I should say, in favor of Team Rival now, even though they've lost two Gold Furies. They're able to win these team fights, which is so important. They're finding the executes that they need. Whether it's solo lane, with or without the execute, they dove the Tier 1 for Dinosaur, able to continue the pressure off of the sustain. Level 13 already onto Rapio, two levels ahead of Izuna. And Izuna here, camping the speed buff on this right-hand side of the moment. He's not going to spawn for a few more seconds, but he does find that blue buff is available, so he's going to take that one away as he loses his own speed buff by doing this to Gnome on the other side of the map. Great play. This is what you really want to do out of a warrior. You're able to confirm the tower earlier on from a nice gank. Extend the lead. He, You saw what he did earlier on when he went into the jungle just to reset the timer of the speed in the blue, and now he's being rewarded for it. Well, now I'm going to get aggressed on. He did steal away the blue buff and the speed buff on this right-hand side, but now with Azuna giving chase down, luckily enough, there's a minion wave there as well, though, to support him. And it will make Azuna back up once more. With Golfier being down, there's a heavy rotation from Cyclone trying to catch Gnome out of position, but not going to be able to find it now with Speed and Blue being stripped away from Cyclone. This allows Rapio to still hold on to a very significant lead because he still has a speed buff up of his own. Well, Saluji's going to go into the jungle and find out that blood buff's not available for him to take on this side. Will meet Gnome now, get a bit of poke pressure off. Not too much to shout home about because Pestilence does give him plenty of magical resistance. An engagement in the middle, a nice intoxicate by Dinosaur is going to get taken into the sky. He was oh, not oh. in execute range, but still credited with the kill. A little bit early from Rapio there. Now Azuna's going to swing in and find two hungry, hungry targets for him to take. But he can't pick one. Instead, he's going to take a hammer to the face and force to ult defensively. Great peel from Zenborn. He still wants to chase his down as the right around the corner 
corner. They could potentially dive this in middle. Instead, just clearing out the wave on the left-hand side. We see oh, no slightly missed a banish, and now going to give chase. though, looking for the pick on Watson. Needed the third shot. The seconds didn't connect, but now he will walk away back to his tier one tower. Still doing a good job holding on to their positioning. Atoma going to juke out that spirit hour. Still looking for the trade. One v two. Zenboard is not in range to follow up, but oh, Rapio is. Rapio is, but he's not going to find the damage he was looking for. And actually, Sanctuary used by No Style. They're worried about it. Now looking for the pulse damage, but Zendon with a hammer. Going to put No Style in an awkward position. And Toman goes back in. Adam Morris continue chasing, but Dinosaur with the flop. Going to really put some pressure onto Gnome now, who's pinned in place. Overhead kick down and still allows Azuna to chase with the spiders. That was a great belly flop from the Bacchus earlier on. And now Azuna's going to be able to lock this one down with the speed buff and with the wrath for the stunt. So answering back, Rapio was not able to find that execute. That would have allowed him to continue on the pressure because he would have had the health sustain. He would have had the cooldowns necessary. I'll tell you, this is just a weird game. I mean, 14 minutes in, 17 kills, two gold for you is down, but gold and experience, I, it doesn't really matter because they're not getting objectives anymore. They're just fired. It's crazy whenever you have both teams with more kills total combined than there are minutes into the game. 17 mm -hmm. kills to 14 and a half minutes. A lot of action between Cyclone and Rival, and we've seen them split before in the past. We've seen how close this game is where two Skull Furies on the side of Cyclone, but Rival slightly ahead in terms of these team fights. Well, Azuna going to pressure Zenborn out there, forced to throw the hammer. Look like the Spiders with the help of Watson for now. The third Gold Fury of the game, it's not often you get to say that, less than 15 minutes, is about to respawn as well. And this one could be very important the way these two teams are fighting. This is getting to almost that late game form, but hold that thought. Going to force out the purification from Watson, the World Weaver, going to force out the Sanctuary. So the, without great. those relics now, Izuna should be able to go ham. Did cost him two ultimates, though, to do that at the same time. And Watson still has his available, but they may look for him a little bit more. And that's what Azuna's after here. Watson again, spiders ticking away. Thunder crash out the wall. It wasn't really required there, but now the fight in the jungle continues. Azuna being pressured. He's going to force into the ultimate, going to walk away. Zenborn's going to try to chase this one down as Atomit uses the gust and the agility. Going to go into the airstrike form. He's going to be able to dive the back on him as Gnome. Gnome just get the ult off, but he doesn't find the target. They're still looking for Azuna, and finally Rapio picks it up. You may try to zone him away, but Cyclone GG are starting to get shredded a little bit. Forced back here, but they will pick up Rapio. No style surviving. And now it's Zenborn under pressure as well by the back of him. So Luigi trying to do what he can as well as Atomit gets credit for blowing. Locally, this fight is crazy between the two, but Saluji gets another. Two for two so far. Dinosaur caught into the board cave, going to be able to jump away. Both Guardians are very low, forced to back, and this should be a goal fury this time around for Rival. The Freya just now coming it. back from the fountain, but they don't have the Wrath, so instead they're going to elect to push out mid and maybe look for more invades on the right instead. Well, this mid tier tower is already below half health anyway. They've only got a couple of minions with them and a full minion wave against them. And obviously, when you see Snow Stylie coming in, I think they're going to have to give that one up, although. You can see the poke damage coming out nicely there from Atoman. He did get a little bit more shred on that tower. Right side mid harpies being split between left Atoman grabbing the left hand side. I'm surprised that they didn't go for the speed or the blue buff invade. That's true. Go for the right side mids instead. Very safe play on the side of Rival. They need to get in position to defend this goal fury. I guess with the fact that no style was in mid lane, he would have seen them rotate into the right jungle, so they would have expected the speed of blue, I guess. But Cyclone GG now going to start the goal fury up. However, they do see Zenborn on his way on the Fafnir with the Wrath available. All he's going to do is leap in and find that hog if he wants to, to get himself out. And now Dinosaur got poked out from that gold fury. Rival could be baiting out a team fight. Zenborn's going to be forced to jump away. Doesn't want to take any sort of damage from this Arachne. And now with him leaping out, they're trying to burst it one more time. Our Cyclone, but now comes in Gnome to slow them down again. The fight will start to ensue once more. Dinosaur still really injured from that last Gold Fury, just constantly binding him out. So that's going to force Rival's hand. It's like, all right, Dinosaur got poked out. It's technically a four and a half on five. Well, here we go. Azun is coming in, as is the Ymir to back him up as well. The Gold Fury resets, but ends up pulling onto Ymir, who's got his ultimate down. Gold Fury still aggro right now between the two teams. Airstrike goes off as well. Gold Fury goes the way of Cyclone GG. Drums of war from Watson. Does a lot of damage. Thunder Crusher to the left looking for Azuna. And finally, Atomic gets credit for the kill. Meanwhile, Rapio takes one up, gets the ultimate off onto Dinosaur. Now he can look for Blokely, who's been forced out in the mid, but no, he's going to go in for no slide. Force the ultimate out of him instead. Atomic picks up Blokely as this is going on. You miss surrounded by Rapio at the same time as Zenbon is fighting off against no slide. Styling just to keep him busy. Rapio gets another kill, and the Ymir takes one, but goes down to Rapio, gets a triple kill in that 
engagement. And that's going to be a D aside for Rival, only losing Gnome in that whole process. The Gold Fury still going the way of Cyclone, but yet again, the theme has been this way. Cyclone gets the Gold Fury, but Rival wins the team fights and then gets the objectives. And at this point in time, you have more timing. The respawns are just too long for Cyclone GG. That's going to allow Rival to pick up the Tier 1, pick up the Tier 2, and then just keep on trucking. Look at that experience gap. Great situation for them to be in right now, especially after all these skirmishes going on. Gold isn't much, but the experience still matters totally. We're still less than 20 minutes in, so nobody even looking at level 20 yet right now. The closest thing is Rapio. And that's an Ao Kuang, that's level 18, four level lead for him against Izuna. This is not something you want to be behind as a Arachne player. You're generally looking for that early game plays. I like the mindset that Izuna had by looking for that level one invade, but not going for the invades earlier on really cost any sort of momentum that he had. Well, Watson, Force out of his own jungle here. He knows this blue buff is under threat. I'm going to try and defend it over the wall with Raiju and the percussive storm. Sadly, though, he won't be able to steal it away. And obviously, Azuna has some decent sustain on the Arachne, so able to steal it and walk away and absorb that poke. Rifle ve feeling very confident right now with all the damage from Rapio. Going to group up, almost finishing off the Rada to Hootie. Rapio still going to dish out some poke onto Dinosaur in return. Trying to bait out that and continuing the rotation so Zenbon can really come in and cause some issues for them there. But it didn't work out in the end. This game still balanced in, in a weird way in terms of how these fights are going, though, Tolly. Totally. A lot of people are dying in both. Absolutely. 17 to 10 right now, heading into the 20 minute mark, and Rival has been getting the better end of it the last two engagements specifically. So now all they have to really do is start grouping up and look for people out of position because the Bacchus, he's not that tanky right now. He doesn't have a second relic finished quite yet, but neither does the Fafnir. Well, those Spiderlings, that web on the right hand side behind the Fire Giant, is actually delaying Team Rival trying to sweep around the back of Yamir there in the solo lane and cause him some problems. And they won't actually pop it, so they'll leave it standing, which is basically a free ward for them over there. With Golfier being down, a lot of pressure around the solo lane side. There's a lot of burst potential on Fire Giant between these two teams. Rapio on the side of Rival, then Cyclone GG having Freya onto Styly. You have to respect the burst between these two magical characters. Yeah, with the goal, like you said, with the Golfier being down, though, it seems like everyone starts to slow down just a little bit. Cyclone GG recognizing that Tier 1 and Tier 2 was lost in the middle lane. They don't have as many fallback options available to them as well if they get in an awkward position. So they're around the Fire Giant and looking once again for Rapio, who illusions away. The Belly flop was really good, but there was not enough quick of a follow-up to capitalize off of it. The purification was still held onto by Rapio, and now there could be a turnaround. The Thunder Crash comes through. Isuna, though, going to juke out uh, quite a bit. Drums of war, though, over the wall. The taunts are connecting on Izuna. He can't get away. Gnome gets credit for the kill. What a nice little play from Watson. Cost him his ultimate, but was definitely worthwhile. And meanwhile, it's Homan feeling very confident that his team is going to win this engagement. Just split pushing on the left-hand side. Gets the Tier 1. Still going for the Tier 2 and the rest of Rival. They don't want anyone to back from Cyclone. No, they're going to keep him all busy. Chase him all the way back to this Tier 2 tower. Even poke him out a little bit more. You can see you No know, Styly trying to get back as well to defend. But by the time he gets there, that Tier 2 tower is going to be gone. Great objective control from Rival. They get a Another two free towers, and now Jingwei on Atomit is going to be able to start grouping up, and they can look for a fire giant themselves, potentially. Oh, Rapio, a little bit too far forward there, but with Gnome and Zambo backing him up, he actually baits Dinosaur into an awkward spot. He has to flop away. All being used by the dragon, and in goes Gnome, as does Watson with the Thunder Crash, too. They're going to look to focus onto Dinosaur. The Intoxicate comes out, as does the Execute. Rapio credited with his ninth kill of the game. And there should be another reset as we see Atomic grouping up now. They could force out the fire giant with Dinosaur being dead, although they do have to worry about this wrath onto Izuna. The members are, they don't have that much mana on the side of Rival. They're scared of trying to do this one here totally it seems. They're actually waiting for Cyclone to come in. I think they're going to go for a fight here. Gnome gets caught back in on the left-hand side. Gnome is in the shop buying items, and that's what happens when you have your shop open. Styly able to take advantage of Gnome. They're really unfortunate. Just lazy back in there. Did not expect the Freya to come from the backhand side, and now that's going to allow Cyclone GG to just hold on a little little bit longer. And that little bit longer can really help them out just to farm up these lanes. They're all pushing for them as well. So getting that farm off those lanes, pushing them back out means that Rival have to defend those at the same time. The problem is right now with this Bacchus that goes in, they don't have the follow up. It just seems that Freya's never there, but hold that thought mid lane, forcing out the backflip from Blokely. Nice little play from Rapio, but they don't force any purifications. Yeah, very quick in and out with that blink overall as well. You're able to use the illusion, get the damage off, get out with the Polynomicon as well on the burst of damage there. But at the same time, it was only against 
Blokely, who can sustain back up with the Unravel a little bit more, as well as that Arcee. The goal of Rapio there was to try to find the triple com combo hit, right? Mm. You blink in, use your 3-2 combo, and then you use your Water Illusion away and dealing damage to the Neath at the same time without even needing to execute, but couldn't confirm the triple hit combo and the backflip occurs. Well, Watson just Thunder Crash under his tier one tower in the mid lane there, and I'm the, right in front of the Holy Cyclone GG, but they don't seem to want to go in here because every time they try and go aggressive on someone, Zembon seems to be waiting with hammers as well as the team are just hanging around the corner. He's been really good about hitting those hammers as well, so great play from Zenborn this game, just really helping out his team, and as a result, Rapio is level 20. We see Atonement already level 19, soon to follow. Interesting to see the Midgardian male coming out from Zenborn here as well on this Fafni. It's not something you see too often these days, but I think it's very vital just to be able to slow down the attacks and slow the speed of this opposition. Even though you don't get magical defense, you still slow down the Freya, but oh, they need nowhere to go. Doesn't even want to try for the execute, just confirming with the water illusion. And the fact he knew he was going to drew back into it a little bit, just caught the edge of that illusion there overall, picked up the kill. Cyclone will try and answer back though, and they're looking towards Watson, who thunder crashes away after purifying. The airstrike over the top though from Jingwei puts him in a bit of an awkward position now, but it's actually the boys of Cyclone GG on the defensive as the dragon form is through, and still Al Kwong, another dragon on this team, is putting pressure on as the goes very deep. This is kind of like Met Yankee style when he went in as Jingwei trying to go ham right now. Atonement though, Salugi is going to get executed, but it's a miss from Rapio Watson though, still credited with the kill. And then leaping away is Dinosaur, but he's still very low. Gnome's too low to really dive this tower though. However, Zenborn's not, he's going to go straight in. There is dot damage on the underhanded tactics, but it's not enough to bring down the support. They're looking for the Phoenix. They want to just be able to tank it up a little bit longer, allow Atonement for the hits that he really needs, find the coerce onto Atonement. No ultimate for Azuna, nowhere to go. Trying to deter the mid Phoenix, not going to find it is the World Weaver. And that was a nice, clean pickup. One more time for Rival, 24 minutes into this game. They could actually just look to head back to base here and then get, go Fire Giant if they want, although I guess they're going to be a little bit worried about Cyclone trying to rush it down. I guess we've only afraid and they've, uh, they, yeah, they've got the damage. They do have the damage, so, but all they really need is Zenborn to really hold it. Without the Wrath on the side of Azuna, there is no potential steal for Cyclone unless they can find the perfect Belly Flop Intoxicate, but there's no ultimate available for Dinosaur. Gnome on Zone G, trying to keep Freya busy, but Dinosaur swinging around the back now. Zenborn getting very low, going to get knocked up and hit by the pool as well. Waiting for the Wrath to secure it, needs to get in carefully. Dinosaur is going in too, and the Fire Giant goes the way of Rival though, and Cyclone GG are now on the run. There's already one member down, and no style. He's surrounded. Gnome gets another kill. Just finding those two free kills after the Fire Giant, and now Rival are heading towards the right. They found the mid Phoenix. They're trying to continue pushing their lead, mm -hmm. getting a little bit more gold with a 7,000 gold lead. Rapio has the damage right now to find a triple combination if he wants to. He can look for that blink play. I mean, he could all in a tank at this point, I think, is the big key here. He can take on Ymir and not be too worried about it. As long as he's got that purification to avoid the freeze, he could take out Ymir and Cyclone GG say enough is enough after that one. Rival take the game after an intense ridiculous amount of kills, 35 of them. Yeah. Just great play, I would say, from Rapio. Despite losing his speed buff right off the bat, despite losing Gold Fury three times in a row, him and Rival were able to still control the pace of the game with grouping up in these team fights. And a lot of credit goes to, I would say, Zenborn and Atonement being able to transition away from the laning phase into these team fights so beautifully. And you talk about those two as well. I mean, those uh, obviously Zenborn stayed in his natural role, but Atonement moved from mid to the Hunter role, and is still making things work. He's starting to find that synergy there as well, which is very important for them. Looking forward towards uh, basically the. Uh, Super regionals, basically. Yeah, you're well, trying. Regionals. You're trying to find the land play right yeah. now on that their side on rival here. They've been very successful in online play from the Europe side. Kind of fell short a little bit in the last SEL Summerland, so they're looking to kind of clean that up. Heading into.